Vinny, episode 1741 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to mini episode 1741 of the FDH Lounge. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our 2024 Summer Olympics preview. Of course, you can find our guide to the games right on the main page at FantasyDraftHelp.com. Here's our top five notes of interest about the Paris Games. Number five, TV coverage. In the United States, all coverage is through NBC Universal with the Mothership Network Channel, USA Network, Telemundo, CNBC, E, the Golf Channel, and of course, Peacock. In short, if you have cable and Peacock, you won't have to miss anything. The opening ceremony will be on NBC and will be very different than usual because it won't be held in a giant stadium. It will emanate live from the highly polluted Seine River as a virtual floating parade through the city that USA Today has proclaimed the most complicated broadcast in TV history. Mike Tirico is the lead host for NBC. Scott Hansen and other broadcasters will be anchoring Gold Zone on Peacock, and it's exactly what you think. A whip-around studio show taking you to events in real time the same way that Hansen operates on NFL Red Zone. There's also alternate presentations on Peacock, including the chick from Call Her Daddy hosting watch parties, Snoop D.O. Double G as a special correspondent, an AI version of Al Michaels narrating event highlights, and a daily highlight show with Kevin Hart and Keenan Thompson. It's a far cry from ABC's basic coverage back in the day and the standard format assigned to Jim McKay for studio coverage. Number four, for all the coverage of Caitlin Clark not making Team USA, there will still be many famous competitors in the games. Let's leave aside tennis, golf, and men's basketball as we'll get to those in a minute. But there's some biggies coming back with Simone Biles in gymnastics, Katie Ledecky and Caleb Dressel in the pool, and Noah Lyles and Shikari Richardson on the track. Many of the biggest storylines in Paris will be revolving around their quests for history. Number three, as has been the case in recent Olympics, we're getting the equivalent of an extra major in tennis and golf with the talent and stakes in those competitions. Let's get this one out of the way immediately. Bryson DeChambeau will not be representing Team USA, despite his recent successes, because most of them have come through Live Golf, which is outside the international rating system. But there will be big names, including Scotty Scheffler, Colin Morikawa, Wyndham Clark, and defending gold medalist Xander Schauffele for the USA, John Rahm for Spain, Rory McIlroy and Shane Lowry for Ireland, Ludwig Aberg for Sweden, Victor Hovland for Norway, Hideki Matsuyama for Japan, Tommy Fleetwood and Matthew Fitzpatrick for Great Britain, Jason Day for Australia, Byun Hung An and Tom Kim for South Korea, and Sepp Straka for Austria. Tennis is similarly star-studded on both the men's and women's sides with Coco Goff and Jessica Pegula for Team USA, Felix Auger Alisame for Canada, recent Wimbledon champion Barbara Krejcikova for the Czech Republic, Angelique Kerber for Germany, Stefano Tsitsipas for Greece, Daniel Medvedev under his own banner and not Russia's, Yannick Sinner for Italy, Naomi Osaka for Japan, Kasper Ruud for Norway, Iga Svitek for Poland, Novak Jokovic for Serbia, and Carlos Alcarez and Rafael Nadal for Spain. Number two, we've got the most star-studded Olympic basketball tournament ever. Let's take a look at the non-favorites first. 
Nikola Jokic for Serbia, SGA, Lou Dort, and Jamal Murray for Canada, the Greek Freak for, you guessed it, Greece, Franz Wagner for Germany, and Wemby and Gobert for France. And then there's the USA with LeBron, Steph, Durant, Embiid, AD, Bam, Tatum, Edwards, Holiday, Halliburton, Booker, and White. This will be tons of fun. Number one, nothing else will be long remembered if the security isn't what it needs to be. The Tokyo Olympics were postponed one year because of COVID, but oddly enough, it almost seems like that was in a previous era. Two major wars have broken out since, one actually on the European continent, and security agencies are warning of potential attacks these days by terrorist groups and even a state actor, Iran. France's now peaceful neighbor to the east, Germany, certainly remembers the lessons of Munich in 1972 when an Olympic experience is totally consumed by horror and bloodshed and the 1996 games in Atlanta were tarnished by the Olympic Park bombing. What the world needs from these games most of all is for them to be remembered for the accomplishments that they contained and not for any bloodshed. Here's hoping that we get there. Thank you for joining us for this mini episode of the FDH Lounge.